Welcome back to the show, everybody. I hope you all got a kick out of last week's 10th celebratory episode where I answered all of your questions. And come to think about it, a couple of questions fell on the ground and I never got to them because I'm drawing them from this little trifle dish. They're on these little notes. And um, I'm going to answer a few more for you guys before we start our 11th episode. And this person wants to know what my favorite game system is. And if you saw one of my recent posts on social media, I was playing my Super Nintendo that is literally over 25 years old. It's the one I played as a little kid. And so I love Super Nintendo. I love N64, PlayStation 2, Dreamcast. Those are the ones that I'm super nostalgic about. But of course I love PS4, PS5. But I think if I had to say my favorite, I'm gonna go with the one that started it all for my family. And that is definitely Super Nintendo, addicted to Super Mario World. That was really the best Super Mario game because it had all of the Marios on there. We loved playing Zelda. That was huge. And we loved playing it on our Game Boys later on. I'm talking about me and my three brothers when I say we. <laughs> so. I love that. I also loved playing Street Fighter. That was super fun. Um, loved playing Donkey Kong Country. You saw me playing that as well. I mean, I am just super nostalgic about that. And I don't know if you guys ever had Lion King on Super Nintendo, but I never made it past that level where you had to jump on top all of the animals' faces. I feel like I always fell down either. I think it was a giraffe's nose or something. Never can make it past that level. It was so much fun though. So Super Nintendo all the way, I would say, although N64 is definitely next in the running because we loved playing Goldeneye. We loved playing Donkey Kong on there. We had the green N64 console and because because I was the firstborn, I was always player number one, and I love that. <laughs> and we all had them color coded. So mine was green, one of my brothers was blue, another one was magenta, the other one was purple because that's all that was available. But we all loved playing, and oh, those were the good days for sure. Mario Party, all of that. Okay, one more question. Where are you from in Nigeria? Well, my family is from Imo State. Most of my family lives in Lagos now, but in Nigeria, there are three tribes, Igbo, Yoruba, Hausa. My family is Igbo, so I'll say to you, Kedu, which means how are you doing? And then you'll respond, Odima, which means you're doing just fine. And if you haven't noticed, like my last name, Obelor, Obilo is a Nigerian name. And two of my middle names are Nigerian names as well. I think I shared with you guys last episode, one of my middle names, Ogechi, which means in God's time. Okay, so there's that. And then the final question here, why do most women want a tall man, but most men don't care about height? Well, I have to say, I know everybody has their preferences, but specifically when it comes to short men, it seems like there's a bunch of vitriol online making fun of short men, calling them short kings, which I feel like is totally disrespectful, totally out of pocket. I've dated men who aren't very tall. I've dated men under six feet tall and it's because they were confident. I was attracted to them and the height really didn't play a factor. I mean, literally I was at Walmart the other day and I saw a guy, I think he was like five foot tall and he, and he was married. You know what I mean? So I just feel like even though there are all of these negative things that people are saying online about short men and, oh, I got to have a guy who's over 6'5", all these kinds of things, I just feel that when somebody really loves you, when somebody really cares about you for you, that really doesn't come into play. And it's going to take you being a complete person, so having lots of confidence and really getting rid of all of that insecurity and not folding to what you're seeing online because if you go online and if you base your life and who you are off of what you see online, it's going to hurt. It's going to hurt. I've been body shamed. I've had people say that, you know, oh, I look too big to be wearing that, all sorts of things, my natural curly hair. I've had people critique that. But at the end of the day, it's who I am and I have to stand by that and I have to be the best version of me as I am and, and so do you and so do you. And I feel like when you have that, it won't be an issue and be confident about it. I know the guys that I dated who were short, they were, all my brothers are under six foot tall and they all have baddies. I'm just saying, like, be confident, be you. That's what I'll always say, be confident, be you. Okay. All right. Well, I really enjoyed that. And we'll definitely have to do all of that again. Thank you to all of you who participated. But guys, I can't believe the year is almost over. Thanksgiving is literally next week. And I haven't decided yet if we'll have a show. I'll probably know by the end of this <laughs> because I have a bunch of cooking to do and I haven't even done my shopping yet. And me, I'm in charge of the mac and cheese, the greens, the potatoes, greens, beans, potatoes, tomatoes, all of that. <laughs> 
<laughs> but I'm trying something a little bit different this year. It's called grasshopper pie. Do you know what it is? Do you know what it is? <laughs> Don't shoot me. No, it doesn't have grasshoppers in it, but it's not really a traditional Thanksgiving dessert. In the past, I've made pies, apple pie, love making that. And I love to make the little cutout leaves and dye them red, yellow, orange, paint them, glaze them. So they emulate fall. Okay, so back to the grasshopper pie. It's made with Oreo crust and minty chilled mousse filling with creme de menthe liqueur. And it just sounded refreshing, different. My mom agreed to it. I might regret it, but we will see. It's definitely not something that you want to bring over to your new significant other's family's Thanksgiving table because it is a green pie and no one's trying to see that on Thanksgiving. I already know. Definitely something to try with people who are already committed to loving you. Now you guys have to let me know what your favorite side dish is. And recently Google released stats of the most searched Thanksgiving side dishes and green bean casserole was the number one most searched dish in 18 states. That includes Texas, New Mexico, Oregon, Washington, Colorado, Maine, Louisiana, which really was crazy to me, and Alaska. And it's wild because every freaking Thanksgiving, green bean casserole is always trending and it's because everybody says that they hate it and it's nasty. Now, personally, me, I like it. Is it my favorite dish? Can I live without it? For sure, but I still will eat it. I will eat it if it's there and if it looks good. California's most searched side was a stuffing recipe along with my hometown state, Missouri. New York's was roasted potatoes. Washington DC's was roasted carrots, which I'm like, they look beautiful. You know, especially if you get the heirloom carrots and they're all different colors and all of this stuff. But I'm gonna tell you right now, I would definitely rather have green bean casserole than roasted carrots. I feel like they're definitely ornamental. They make the plate look gorgeous, but I don't, I don't But enough about food, okay? Let's pivot to sports real quick because I want to double down on statements I made in a previous episode regarding the University of Michigan's football sign-stealing scandal. Now, I covered this three episodes ago, and a lot's changed since then. Michigan staffer Connor Stallions, yeah, the one accused of the sign-stealing, which is going to opponents' games, learning their cues for plays, recording them. Yeah, he was fired. And coach Jim Harbaugh was suspended last week for the final three games of the season, but, I mean, he'll still be able to attend practices. And that hasn't stopped Michigan from winning on the road. Sharon Moore took over as interim coach, and after beating Penn State 24-15, to things got spiritually explicit. Well, I thank the Lord. Well, I thank Coach Harbaugh. I love you, man. Love the shit out of you, man. This is for you. For this university, the president, our AD. We got the best players, best university, best alumni in the country. Love you guys. These fucking guys right here. These guys right here, man. These guys did it. These guys did it, man. Talk to him, man. Love you thank God and then you drop a few F-bombs, but I think the Lord will forgive them. Uh, but there's this whole debate online right now. It's like Michigan versus the world, right? How Michigan fans, you know, are they're playing the victim card saying sign stealing isn't a big deal. Now, here's the double down from me. Yeah, it is a big deal because it's against the rules. It doesn't matter if everyone else is doing it. We know what our moms would say to that. So if everyone jumps off the bridge, would you jump too? No. And now that you've been caught, you got to pay the price, especially when you're already being investigated for recruitment during the COVID dead period, which could prove to be even more problematic if the NCAA deems Michigan a repeat violator, which could leave them open for the death penalty, which is the harshest penalty a school can receive, which could be a ban from competing in a sport for at least a year. You might remember this happening to SMU football. Yeah, back in 1987. I can't really fathom that happening here, but it is interesting interesting that Coach Harbaugh was suspended without a complete investigation. And it's also interesting that it's happening so fast, considering it took six years for the NCAA to levy penalties against KU for violating recruiting restrictions. KU's men's basketball program had to vacate its 2018 Final Four appearance and wins, plus they're on a three-year probation, and all of that happened this year, just this past October. So I definitely see some sort of probation and big dollar fines in Michigan's future. If it's worse than that, we'll just have to wait and see. In other news, how are you feeling about the NBA in-season tournament? I think it's pretty cool. 
especially since the semifinals and championship game will be taking place in Vegas. But basically, the tournament, yeah, it started on November 3rd. It ends December 9th. All teams participate. Eight teams advance to the second and final stage, which are the single elimination knockout rounds. Players get a shiny new trophy and a prize pool for teams that advance to the knockout stages. So more money, the longer your team stays alive. Lots of motivation there. Players that lose in the quarterfinals, they get $50,000. Lose in the semis, you get $100,000. You get to the championship championship and lose, you get 200000 And if your team wins the championship, every player, including the coach, gets $500,000. Not too shabby. You get in-season bragging rights and half a mil. Combine that with the NBA's rest rules that require star players to play in-season tournament games and national TV games. Us fans may not get a new $500,000 Rolls Royce, but we do get more entertaining games. And if putting people in headlocks is what you like to see on the court, that's exactly what happened this past Tuesday in the Warriors and Timberwolves game. So basically, it ended up like Gobert he was grabbing Clay and so Draymond came in grabbed Gobert put him in a headlock trying to get him off Clay and everyone I mentioned but Gobert got ejected and I don't know why Clay Thompson really got ejected I just couldn't see it leave my guy Clay Thompson alone but it's got the internet talking and definitely adding fuel to the in-season fire and are you liking those colorful courts I've been seeing some complaints about them star player Luka Doncic for example put some blame on the new courts after the Mavs lost to the Pelicans earlier this week. I mean, he said the court was really slippery and that the ball didn't really bounce in some places and the courts need to be more stable if they're going to have them like that. Now, I'm hoping these new courts don't result in any injuries for the players. What Luca said instantly reminded me of what happened to Aaron Rodgers the first game of the season for the Jets when he tore his ACL. Then you had players saying, oh, the turf is slippery. Hope nothing like that. But let me know what you think of them. Are they distracting? Are they too colorful? That Pelicans one was on a whole nother level. Okay, now, I promise I'm not the feds, but do you smoke weed? Well, if you live in Ohio, as of December 7th, it will be perfectly legal to possess and recreationally consume marijuana. Adults 21 and over are allowed to have up to two and a half ounces of weed and 15 grams of extracts on them. Dispensaries, though, they're not going to be selling products anytime soon, though, because they got to work out all the licensing rules and then pass out the elusive licenses. And you can actually start growing it in Ohio starting December 7th, a nice little Christmas present. But before you get to puffing and no judgment, but I'm big on health and research and I just wanted to share a new study that was presented this week at the American Heart Association Scientific Sessions. So researchers, they studied more than 150,000 people. They studied their marijuana usage and how it impacted their cardiovascular health to see if it elevated risks of heart failure, type 2 diabetes, high blood pressure. And they found that people who reported daily marijuana use had a 34% increased risk of developing heart failure compared to those who reported never using marijuana. The median age of those studied was 54 years old, 60% of the participants were female, 70% were white, 21% black, and they were followed for four years, 2016 to 2022. Now, the study didn't specify whether the marijuana was always inhaled or eaten, like gummies. The CDC says, though, that marijuana usage before age 18 can impact your brain health, too. It might affect how the brain builds connections for functions like attention, memory, and learning. More research is definitely needed, and it's called for as marijuana is becoming legalized in more and more states, and more people turn to it for chronic pain management. And it's just something to think about. I'm not trying to rain on anybody's parade here, but we definitely need more research. I personally don't smoke. Um, I'm more of a workout and maybe have a glass of some wine at the end of the day, maybe some beer. Uh, One of my lovely subscribers on Instagram told me that I needed to try Sam Adams. I think it's cherry wheat. I enjoyed that. That was kind of fun. (laughs) I think that, you know, everybody has their methods of what they turn to. I don't have a problem with weed. I mean, I don't smoke, but I know a lot of people who smoke weed and I know people who use it for chronic pain management. And it's like, you want to be careful because you could be treating something and then adding on to a problem that could develop much later in life. But of course, with everything, moderation is important. Okay, guys, let's end things on a fun note. (laughs) What are you binging? What are you watching? I want to wrap things up with a movie recommendation since I'm such a huge movie buff, if you have not already noticed. And with all of the relationship turmoil online, I think I have the perfect recommendation. It's called Fair Play and it's on Netflix. The synopsis reads, an unexpected promotion at a cutthroat hedge fund pushes a newly engaged couple's relationship to the 
brink. Now, the first five minutes, yeah, it's a little graphic. This is not a kid's movie, but it is symbolic. And once you get past it, the film gets to the heart of gender roles and tensions in the present day working world, themes of envy, success, power, and control. And I could definitely relate to some of the things that happened in the movie. Now, I thought it was a great watch and would love to know what you guys think. It has an 86% rating on Rotten Tomatoes. If that's what moves you, you got to check it out. All right, that's the end of our show. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope all of you have an amazing Thanksgiving.